Good morning. We, the group number 9, are here to present the topic, the scanning electron microscope. The main contents we are going to deal with are scanning electron microscope, its principle, construction, advantages and disadvantages, and lastly its applications. First, we are going to look at the principle of a scanning electron microscope. The scanning electron microscope is an instrument that produces a largely magnified image by using electrons instead of light. A beam of electrons is produced at the top of the microscope by an electron gun. The electron beam follows a vertical path through the microscope which is held within a vacuum. The beam travels through electromagnetic fields and lenses which focuses the beam down towards the sample. Once the beam hits the sample, electrons X-rays are ejected from the sample. Next, we are going to look at the construction of a scanning electron microscope. The basic components of a scanning electron microscope are an electron gun, that is a filament, condenser lens, objective aperture, scan holes, chamber, detectors, computer hardware and software. So let's see how the sum works. In a sum, an electron beam is emitted from an electron gun, then narrowed to a size of approximately 0.4 to 5 nm in diameter through the use of one or two condenser lenses. The beam then passes through a pair of deflection coils in the electron column to deflect the beam in X and Y axis before interacting with the sample. This deflection ensures that the scan is in a partial fashion which means it's a rectangular image capture pattern of the sample. When the electron beam interacts with the sample, it loses energy due to a random scattering and absorption by the sample. A schematic showing the components of the sample and how it works is shown in the previous slide. Now we can look at the characteristic information of sum. First of all, topography. Topography deals with the surface features of an object or how it looks, its texture, direct relation between these features and material properties. Second is morphology. It deals with the shape and size of a particle, making up the object direct relation between these structures and material properties. Third one is composition. The elements and the compounds that the object is composed of and the relative amount of them. Direct relation between composition and material properties. Fourth one is crystallography information. It deals with how the atoms are arranged in the object. Direct relation between this arrangement and material properties. Electron gun is one of the major part of a cell. It is mainly classified into thermionic gun and field gun. So in this thermionic gun, uh, the metal is heated to a sufficient temperature to enable the free electrons to come out of its surface. In this field gun, a very strong electric field is applied to the metal, which pulls the electrons out of the surface due to the attraction of the positive field. The next one is condenser lens. So as the name suggests, its main role is to control the size of the beam and for a given objective aperture size, determines the number of electrons in the beam which hit the sample up to three condenser lenses are often used in cells. The greater the lens strength, the smaller the resulting beam diameter and the greater the convergence angle. In electron microscopes, electromagnetic lenses are used. The object key aperture arm fit above the object key lens in the scanning electron microscope. An object key aperture controls the electron beam by means of limiting electron far from the beam center. A small aperture will shrink the electron probe radius but will also reduce the current as it essentially removes the electron node near the beam center.
with the electrode beep sitter active with a sample with a static electrode microscope multiple event happened. With general different dictators are needed to distinguish secondary electrodes, backscattered electrodes or characteristic X-rays. Depending upon the accelerating voltage and sample density, the signals come from different penetration depth. With a simple electrode microscope is used, the sample and the column must always be at wake-up. A wake-up environment means that most of the air molecules have been removed from the inside of microscope. You can think of wake-up as a density. There are certain number of gas molecules in a given space. So now we are going to discuss about advantages of electron scanning microscope. It includes a wide range of applications, the detailed three dimension and topographical imaging and the versatile information which is generated from different detectors. It is also easy to operate with proper training and advances in computer technology and associated software which make operation user friendly. Although all samples must be prepared before placed in a vacuum chamber, but if you acquire a minimum preparation actions. Disadvantages of electron scanning microscope. It starts with the size and cost. It is very expensive, large and must be placed in an area free of possible electric, magnetic or vibrational interference. Its maintenance involves keeping a steady voltage currents to electromagnetic coil and circulation of cool water. SEM are limited to solid, inorganic sample small enough to fix inside the vacuum chamber that can handle moderate vacuum pressure. Applications of SEM It can be applied to material that conduct electricity. If they don't, you need to cover your sample with a thin metallic film. It is used in material science, research, quality control and failure analysis purpose. It can detect chemical composition, morphology, topography and microstructure. It is used to inspect semiconductors and microchip assemblies. Forensic science for the things like currency examination, handwriting analysis, etc. In biology, it is used for imaging of insect parts, animal tissue or even bacteria or virus. <laughs>